Today, I'm gonna take you step by step through some color base sound design. Hi, I'm Ash, welcome back to the channel. And I've made a bunch of these types of color base stabs already but they're all stuck to one key. And I figured, hey, I'll record myself while I make some more in a different key. I'll walk you through it step by step so you can follow along. And this is all using stock Ableton plugins. So a few things to mention, you can see a little keyboard and mouse here to see what hot keys I'm pushing because sometimes I tend to push them all without explaining. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And this is all Windows based. So if you see control, it's command on Mac. If you see alt, it's option. And I'd say that's enough yapping. Let's get started. But to me, Again. You might know that DistroKid is the best way to get your music onto streaming services like Spotify, TikTok, Apple Music. But once they're uploaded, you can't just wait for people to come flock into your music without any sort of promotion. And that's why included with your DistroKid membership are DistroKid's awesome built-in promotional tools. You get stuff like promo cards to make posting about your new song on social media incredibly easy. Plus, they have Hyperfollow, which lets you have both a pre-save marketing page within minutes of uploading your music, and then once the release goes live, it'll automatically switch over to the links to those services. There's also awesome visualizers you can use, meme videos you can make, so next time you're thinking about uploading your music, use DistroKid for all the promotional tools available to you. And with my VIP link, you get 7% off your first year. Thank you so much, DistroKid, for making this video possible. Now, let's get to it. In order to get started with just making these sounds, I start off with a MIDI track and an audio track. So this MIDI track is going to be our chords because with color bass, you're basically turning bass sounds into chords. You're blending chords with uh, any kind of bass impact. So one MIDI track for chords and then the audio track, which we'll just call this our color bass maker just for now. So this is audio, this is MIDI. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna write some chords. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna write outside of A major so that I have some more color bass stabs in different keys. So I'm gonna pick a key. I like B major, as a that's a, a key signature that I really like writing in. Normally, I would write out the chords as normal so that we have them but for simplicity's sake and because we'll be making a bunch of different chords um, rather than having to write each one in and do that like very tedious task we're gonna skip all of that and I'm gonna activate my easy chord rack and we're gonna match it with the key that I'm writing in keeping it to B major like this that way I can easily generate chords so for this one, let's start with our four chord, which is E. It's written, it's good to go. And I like turning on adding the seventh. You hear the difference? And also inverting the third so that it spreads out the voices more. So I turn that on. Boom. Gorgeous. Now it's a pretty good sound to start with, but with color bass, I like having the chords staggered because when we end up blending it with our bass layer, it's nice to have that movement to the chord. And with easy chord rack, now you're like, damn, that's not staggered. That's all being pushed all in one go. Well, that's also easily solved with my strum rack. Both of these racks I will make available for free just down in the description below so you can grab those. Essentially what this does is self-explanatory. Take a listen. You hear that? Adds a little bit of strum. Now there are a couple parameters that I do need to fix. I think the load load length, note length is a little long so I'm going to lower it there. And you can hear that kind of bloop sound that the chord makes and that little bloop is really great for when you start combining it with whatever impact or bass sound or yoink that you're going to be using. You can adjust how much blimp there is with the rate here. And what I'll actually do is when I release this, I'm gonna map them to macros so that you only have to turn two knobs. But if you wanna know what knobs you're turning, you are turning the rate and the length. So if we turn the, uh, if we turn the rate up, it'll be more blah, 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 blah. But that's a little too much, so we're going to bring it down. 
And I'm going to turn on my uh, MIDI keyboard so I can just hit it without having to open up the MIDI thing every time. And I like that. We can change the length as well. But the length is not as important either because we can change that in the actual synth. Now, speaking of the actual synth, there are a lot of different sounds that you can use as your chord. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use a, maybe a square wave, actually. Anything that sounds kind of plucky. And I'm actually going to try and make it more, more plucky with the envelope. There we go. Really plucky stuff like this sounds awesome. Once you have your chord set up, resample it. So another new audio track, Command or Control T, and we're gonna call this Resample. This is for resampling this chord. That's important we do that because we need an audio file to drag into the color base maker. But we'll just follow step by step. Switch this to resampling. If you don't see this part on Ableton, see this IO, you're gonna click that so that you can see the inputs and outputs. That's what the IO stands for. You're gonna change that to resampling. Next thing we wanna do, we hit solo on the chords, arm record on resample, and we're gonna record it. Now we have a nice chord sample, select it the exact length of the chord, and then we're gonna go command or control J to consolidate. That's important because we don't want any of this stuff to go into Color Base Maker. So let's go over to Color Base Maker, put on Hybrid Reverb. This is a plugin in Ableton 11. If you don't have Ableton 11, you can go onto Ableton's website and download a thing called Convolution Reverb. But uh, for this video, I'll be using Hybrid Reverb. And we're, what we're going to do is click down here, switch it to Convolution Mode. Next thing, we take this, drag it right onto there. Now we can solo this and it's not really doing anything. We need a bass sample to combine this with. So I'm going to go online and let's just find a yoink. Something like that with a lot of noise. And an important thing you want to do is make sure that there's no key associated with it. I'm going to just drag that in. And there you go. We can already hear it being combined with the chord that we made. So if I turn hybrid reverb off, that's the yoink, and then with the chord on. To help myself be organized, I label all of the chords that I've done. So I know that this is the E or B major, so it's the one, two, three, four chord. If these numbers that I'm saying don't make any sense to you, watch this chord video that I put out and um, it'll make more sense. This helps me know exactly what chord I'm putting in so that when I bounce it and label it and when I get to the songwriting part, I want the progression to be four, five, six. And because I've labeled all the chords, I know exactly what they are so I can just focus on how the progression sounds and not on like the, the detailed sound design that we'll be doing here. So this is our four chord and I'm actually going to label it uh, square pluck so that I know what the chord source is as well, what the sound source is, because there's a lot of different variations we can do once we start experimenting in the actual sound design. Right now, I'm just showing you the step-by-step -step from going from chord to color base, which I should get back to, but there's a lot of stuff that you can change around. So let's get back to the actual step-by-step. -step. The next thing we wanna do after this is I like, I like putting in a bunch of different yoink different bases and then we can also adjust the dry wet i like 80 percent because it keeps a bit of the original sound but still gives a lot of the chord itself and you don't have to use yoinks either another way that i've done it i'll hit record then i'll just go turn up the volume on these but <laughs> I'll have a nice collection of both bass sounds and my lovely mouth noises. And this is me just dragging in other bass sounds. Let me turn off the hybrid reverb so you can hear. And you could hear how um, each bass sound affects it. I like finding bass sounds or yoinks with a lot more noise and stuff that like sweeps through the frequencies. Something like that, because that catches the chords uh, a lot better. 
and the chord you pick is way more pronounced when you use this. That's why when doing the mouth noise is like, those actually pull out a lot of the chords really well. So as long as there's a blend of mid-range bass and white noise, I find those give the best results. So this is our color base maker. We're gonna make another audio track and we'll call this the final stab or whatever, because we'll be resampling one more time and then putting some basic processing on this channel. And this is like our final stabs that we can bounce out and put into a sample pack collection or whatever, so that you have color-based stabs ready to go when you're ready to write your song. Before we process it, let's capture the noises that we made. So we're gonna solo this. On final stab, we set it to resampling and then we hit arm record, hit record, and we're gonna collect all of the color base samples. Very good. First thing I wanna add is a widener, and that's this preset here. It's a delay, that's all it is. So you just copy these settings down, and what that will do is we'll widen the sound a little. When I EQ some of these lows out, we're gonna add good old wombo combo. That's just OTT, saturator. Start turning up these knobs to thicken up the sound a little. And then one more EQ to clean it up a bit. Like all of these lows, they'll need them. You can do a little cut there. Accentuate some of these highs. Oh, that's gorgeous. I think this is like one of my favorite ones. And boom, there we go. So then what I'm going to do, rename it and label it. So this was the three chord, B major, square pluck, and then control J to consolidate. And there it is. You go show in browser. And then if you have like a sample pack or whatever, hold control to copy it, drag it onto there. And then it shows up here. And then afterwards you can organize it. So I can make my new folder, B major, and then just drag and drop it in there. Then it's ready to go. It's not the three chord, this is the four chord. Whoops, anyway, there we go. So we have, so that's my, from beginning to ending, how I go from nothing to a bunch of color-based stabs. Now, of course, because this is a sound design session, we want to start experimenting with all the different types of sounds we can make. So one of the first things I like to switch up, we don't have to use wavetable. We don't have to use a square wave. I can actually use um, some different things. I am going to put on a secret plugin that uh, will be revealed in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. But essentially, I'm getting some high quality sounds and with the chords and with my strum and my chord rack, you can hear what that sounds like. And that's the sound from the secret plugin. It won't be secret after next week, so chill, chill. But we're gonna go through the same thing now. I'm on the four chord and we're gonna resample it. So, resampling that. What's nice about this one, it has an even longer decay. That'll make, <laughs> that'll make these yoinks have even more character. So let's rename it four chord. And this is the, the presets called ice pluck. Once again, control J and then into the convolution reverb it goes. Here a little preview what that sounds like. We can adjust dry wet as we feel. Maybe I want a little bit more bass to punch through, so we're gonna leave it there. Doesn't sound too great with the mouth noises, but since it's a sound design session, let's just grab this one, hit and record. Keep it for that. And then when we go to this one, I'm gonna turn it back up. And same thing, record. Sounds like that. And with the processing, personally, I think it sounds great. Uh, we're getting a bit of distortion, so I'm actually gonna turn it down a bit on the limiter. Anytime I hear distortion like that, this is what's technically called gain staging, and I will turn down gain on that. All you gotta do is look in between your plugins making sure this isn't hitting the red and you can just turn the gains or outputs down. Maybe that distortion is not too bad. We'll keep it. Once again, renaming it. This is the four chord ice pluck and we consolidate. 
You go show in browser, hold control, and then drop, and bam, it's there. I have it um, labeled with the chord type and then the source of the chord as well. Now I would repeat this with like the five chord. Then I would do the same process. It's a little repetitive and that's why doing this while trying to write a song is not the most ideal way to do it. But whatever ways works, right? So five chord, ice pluck, then dragging and dropping this into here. Listening preview. I'm not deleting these, I'm just moving these over. And you can see how the project file starts to get a little messy. And that's why I do sound design in separate sessions. But you find your own way of how to do stuff. Let me be a start of your inspiration and not the definitive way of how to do it. And then same thing. We can call this five chord, ice pluck, B major. I really need to remember what my naming conventions are, but. Okay, you don't need to see me rename, renaming stuff. We can experiment even further. Let's go back into the secret plugin and find some other sounds. It, it really works best when the sounds are like super plucky. Let's see what this sounds like. This is like a piano. Oh, this could be really nice. And we're gonna uh, extend the length a bit. I want to make the blips a little less pronounced. A high octave as well. That's our five chord. Put it on the six. Same thing. Let's see if we can find some other yoinks as well. So this is when experimentation starts to get fun. When you start combining different noises and sounds. Uh, I also like using drum hits as well. They turn out really nice. Mm, maybe not. Let's try something a little bit more bassy, less noise. Even if you do want to pick a key, just make sure that it's close or matching up to what your chord root note is. That's all. That's the only reason why I say uh, don't pick a key on it. But then that means you have to change the bass hit every time you change a note. And that could have potential of messing stuff up. And you can also use Ableton's warp to, to move around what the thing sounds like. Maybe I don't like that. I think I want to try adding more bloom, more stagger to the chord. The more effects that the chord sample itself has, like reverb, that type of stuff, the more that the convolution reverb can pull from it. And that's why the secret plugin is so great for this type of sound design. So let's try resampling that. You can also play around with the decay and stuff here too, to shorten it. This one just turns out so great. Anyway, that's essentially the step-by-step -step process of how to make color-based sounds. Or this is one way to make color-based sounds. I'm not saying this is the only way, but it's, it's a good place to start. A good way to keep yourself organized. Let's hear it processed. Yes. That's awesome. But what I'm basically trying to do is have a little co collection. Uh, you can do this one of two ways. You can start bouncing these out, or when you're going to bounce these out, you can do it by individual stab, or what I did was I just, <laughs> I just bounced out the entire thing. And then when I started putting it into the song, I would just pick and choose, but that's, that is not as efficient as it probably is. Anyway, these are gonna sound great in a song. And if you wanna hear what they sound like in a song, subscribe to the channel because next week I'll be showing you how these sound in context with the whole song. Thank you guys for watching. Shout out to all the Patreon VIPs. I will see you next time. Go make some bangers. Peace.